the US Congress and presidential elections. Voting. The people's chance to decide who they want to run their country and represent their interests. But how does it work in the United States of America? Across the pond, voting is quite different. Like the UK Parliament, the United States Congress has two houses, the House of Representatives and the Senate. Unlike the UK, there are public elections for both houses, and a third, separate election is held to choose a president. In the US, the president is both the head of state and the head of government. In the UK, these roles are carried out separately, by the monarch and the prime minister. The House of Representatives in the US Congress is designed to give a voice to the people of every local voting region of America. Members of the House of Representatives stand for re-election every two years. Each state is split into districts, and each district votes for one representative. The number of districts depends on the population of each state. For example, California, the most populous state, is split into 53 districts, so has 53 representatives. But Alaska, which is huge but has a really small population, only has one district and therefore only one representative in the House. Like the UK House of Commons, the election system is first past the post, so the candidate with the most votes in each district wins a seat in the House of Representatives. The party that wins a majority of seats in the House takes control. The ideal situation for a president is that the House is controlled by their own party. However, with elections held every two years, there's always a midterm election in the middle of a president's time in office. If the public thinks that the president's not doing a great job, they can vote in more members of the opposition party, making it more difficult for the president to pass laws. The Senate in the US Congress, like the House of Lords in the UK Parliament, is sometimes called the Upper House. George Washington described the Senate as the saucer that cools the coffee, meaning that it's their job to scrutinise and question all proposals made by both the House of Representatives and the President, before voting to decide whether they should proceed as law. Senators, like members of the House of Representatives, are also elected to their seats by the public. Senators serve six-year terms, and elections are staggered. So every two years, a third of the senators run for re-election. Each state is represented by two senators, regardless of its population. And again, the first-past-the-post voting system is used, so the candidate with the most votes wins. So how do Americans choose their leader? Well, presidential elections take place every four years. The two main parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, host big get-togethers where they choose their presidential candidate, the person they think will be the best leader for the nation. The winning candidate then chooses their vice presidential candidate, also known as their running mate, to help support the campaign. Presidential candidates usually choose someone with different areas of skill or knowledge so they present voters with the best package. Together, they're known as a ticket. Presidential candidates from both parties then start out on massive election campaigns to gain as much voter support as possible. They travel across the country and hold great big campaign rallies where they set out their policies and their ideas for the whole country. These campaigns cost money, lots of it. So both candidates have large campaign teams who help raise the tens of millions of dollars needed to keep them afloat. When it comes to election day, the public go to the polls to vote for one presidential ticket. So far, so easy. However, the public don't vote directly for their choice of president. Instead, a system called the Electoral College is used. Each state is allocated a number of electors that will make the final choice. A state has the same number of electors as it does senators and representatives. In most states, all the electors will vote for the presidential ticket which received the most support in the public vote. Finally, the presidential ticket with the most electoral college votes becomes president and vice president of the United States of America. So that's how things work in the US. A democracy like the UK, but on a much larger scale.